so hello everyone uh, so we will start section today so i am aishwarya from university of hyderabad so this is our first tutorial class which we are going to discuss today about the physics of materials so before uh, going to the problem solving session what we will do like we will go through the notes whatever which are already prepared in the week one so today's class which is related to week one um, lectures so if we go to the deep to the topics so what in uh, mainly we are uh, dealing in the <coughs> courses like properties of material thermal expansion then basic solid state theory like free electron ideal gas and Bruce model and its successful and limitations both and then Boltzmann statistics and little bit starting of quantum mechanics then Fermi Dirac statistics and all and after that we will go to the uh, solid space physics topics like reciprocal space and Wigner cells, brilliant zone, etc. Uh, till uh, normally, uh, where we will to reach like free electron model and tight binding approximation, then we will generally go to the properties of the material like from semiconductor magnetic property, uh, some idea about the superconductivity, and Bose Einstein statistics. So, that is the main uh, topics which we are going to solve in this course okay now uh, let us move to the uh, lecture one introduction part so here actually uh, mainly are discussed about the properties of the material okay so remaining all are just like i hope you all listen the videos already so in properties of material what we have to mainly go through it uh, sir explained about first what is metal and all after that uh, why uh, the properties of material and uh, important so what are the different properties mechanical chemical electrical thermal magnetic and optical properties so all these we will study very detail in this course so first at the glance we will go to one by one um, here so if you see uh, go to the mechanical property and then chemical electrical thermal and magnetic and optical so we will uh, look into the each one separately so first we will talk about the mechanical property uh, we know that if we start with mechanical property from the basic step it will know that stress strain curve right so stress strain curve <coughs> now for there are specific ways which explain the uh, mechanical properties of the material so we have um, a tensile tested specimen so that it has a certain shape uh, to obtain the stress strain curve so normally we will make a sample which has like elongated uh, up under the stress and strain so we will what will be the maximum that will be the uh, curve which is explained in the stress strain curves okay so now let us go to first we have to know about few words that is modulus of elasticity yield strength tensile strength ductility resilience and toughness and hardness okay so we will go to one by one so first one is modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity means the slope of the linear region of the stress strain curve so if this is a stress strain curve till this region for example from here to here wherever the linear t is there that ratio we can call it as the modulus of elasticity ratio by stress to strain okay so that is the modulus of elasticity and yield strength yield strength is what strength or stress which correspond to the value at which the linear region just about end and the non-linear region begins so it is just like where the linear region is ending and about the other not the peak value till the peak value that region we can call it as yield strength so in the yield strength what what will happen the end of the linear region you have a strength corresponding to it as the is yield strength the, the maximum strength which can the material can be afford okay now uh, tensile strength another term is tensile strength what is tensile strength the maximum of the curve that highest of this curve like where the maximum value of the stretch stress we are getting that is tensile strength of the material that is the stress it can be before it can fail 
so after that what will happen the material will break okay so the other ta another term is ductility ductility is the extent to which the material can elongate okay how much maximum it can elongate uh, that we are calling as ductility so strain if you look into the total elongation that can or percentage of elongation that it can undergo before completely fails fracture that is a measure of ductility so maximum elongation what is possible that we can call it as ductility okay so these tense you have to remember because when we study mechanical property details this will be just like glance idea okay now resilience so it is that energy will observe and still stay within its elastic deformation region regime so in other words we can tell that it is the area under the stress strain cur curve up uh, to the yield point yield strength okay so that we can resilience resilience of the material it is not but area under the stress strain curve okay another topic topic is toughness so toughness in general is the total energy that it will be absorbed to failure okay so in a sense it's sort of overall area under the curve of the entire stress strain curve so here the resilience is the area under the curve where till the elastic deform region so elastic deform region means if you see like this will be straight line and curve will be like this so elastic region means only this linear region what is the area under the curve it will un it will take the resilience and toughness will be the total area under the curve okay and another top uh, title is hardness so hardness is the material simply the ability to resist local deformation so that we can call it as hardness okay now so these are the main topic which main uh, area which you have to uh, like words which you have to remember in the mechanical properties so another part is chemical properties so fully you can just go through it what is mechanical property i'll wait 5 more 5 minutes so just go through it then we will go to the chemical properties <laughs>
hope you can <coughs> understood this part now we will go to the chemical property so in chemical property we have to know about the bonding energy ionization energy electron affinity and deteriorative properties okay so mm, mainly the bonding energy and ionization energy then we would like to see how easy to remove a electron from the atom or how easy to uh, easy it to so and add an electron to the atom so that is the both energies uh, so if now the ability to remove or add the electron reflect how easy to oxidize the material or reduce the material so that's why uh, like these two things we will study very deeply how we can add um, for example when we uh, discuss about thermal expansion i hope you listen those videos which are already explained there we have we are discussing about the ionization energy right and so that is the main things next one is electrical elect properties in electrical property we will deal with electrical conductivity dielectric constant band structure and electromobility so band structure and electromobility we will discuss the later session and dielectric i hope you know already and electrical conductivity nothing but the flow of electrons okay so transport of charge so mainly we will deal with the electrons here the charged particles so there are different ways in which charge could be transported more specifically there are different carriers of charge you can carry the charges using different species and based on which species is carrying the charge you are most, more specifically say it is a conductivity related to the species okay so dip if it is electron it is electronic conductivity uh, or if any other particle we are dealing it depends on that how the conductivity will change it okay now uh, for example here what we have explained is oxygen senses and typical design for the oxygen senses is what it can conduct oxygen ions so that's what here we told that what are the species which is moving carrying that in names of that conductivity will be measurable so mainly in current and all it will whatever we are dealing all are like electrons so that's a electrical conductivity we mainly using that term now <coughs> now how electron can move in the system so if it is metal free electrons will be there it can move wherever the system but other than that we have to apply field so the when we apply field the electron start moving in response to the field and to find out what the velocity of the electron and that give the uh, we give us a sense of that how easy it for electron to move or put all these information together what we can call it as mobility of the electrons okay so how we can move the electron mainly to apply the external field another one is thermal properties so thermal properties will mainly deal with thermal expansion thermal conductivity and specific heat so we know that normally a good conductor of electricity is always happen to be a good conductor of heat okay so in thermal uh, properties mainly we will concentrate about the expansion or thermal contraction okay thermal expansion or thermal contraction so mainly mm, that we will discuss the next session separately what is thermal expansion or shrink now let us see the magnetic property magnetic property mainly in the last section of this course only we are dealing with the magnetic properties there we will discuss about the curie temperature remanescence and coercivity soft magnetic material and hard magnetic materials so this is the first class outline and another last property which is optical property there we will discuss about the refractive index reflectivity absorptivity and transmittivity so all these properties like electrical thermal magnetic chemical and optical property there are five different kind of properties which we are dealing all these property related to something occurring at the atomic level in the crystal structure or the subatomic level.
Thank you. So that is the first section of the lecture. Now we deeply move into the thermal expansion part. So just go through that where the properties which just explain how it is. Okay. Now we'll go to the thermal expansion. Hope you have listened already the thermal expansion video. So what it's mainly the thermal property that is thermal expansion so first of all how thermal expansion what will is all the material uh, when we apply when we'll give the heat is all materials are expanding or is there any material who shrink while we are applying heat so those things we are going to discuss here so just read this session then we will slowly start the class So in thermal expansion, if you see two materials, we are taking two ma different metals that we are calling A and B. So we have two different metals and they are capable to expand to different degrees of the same uh, rise in temperature. So if a particular temperature like for example T0, this is the size of the material, a material A and B. When we are heating, what will happen? A Just imagine that A expand more than B. then there will be like bending in the A accordingly B also will end bend so at the time T1 that is um, sorry at the temperature T1 the T1 which is greater than 0 then uh, the it will happen the bending so if you see uh, if you saw this is the when at um, temperature T0 uh, this is the term temperature at T1 which is greater than the T0 which is the happening this much so this uh, that is a relationship between the two temperature and the length <coughs> sample is changed like dimension of the sample so that we can see here actually uh, similarly there are uh, some other material which like heat shrinks the material okay uh, so here what we have seen that is expansion so i'm just going through the what happened in the last classes uh, then we will see the problem part so now see uh, where the shrinking shrink of the material when the temperature up when the heat applies so that is the one example like for a ceiling 
seal to make a good contact between the wire and seal that wire such way that no possibility to electric short like normally if we connecting two metal wires which were the current passes then if we seal it with some polymers normally polymer based material only it will be there then if you heat it it will shrink so that is also one application so not only the expansion shrinking also can be useful for in the several situations okay so that's the one thing now let's see if we are dealing with the uh, mathematical part so uh, certain temperature the length is l0 that is temperature t0 the length is l0 and after temperature tt then the length is lt for the expansion in such situation what will happen so we can get a relation that lt is equal to l0 plus l0 alpha tt minus d0 if you take l0 common it will be like lt is equal to l0 into 1 plus alpha delta t you should remember this formula it is very important for the problem section which may ask in the exam also okay now with that so uh, one section now let us see what is happening in the atomic level when the heat applied to the system so normally what will happen if the heat applying to the system is the atoms will vibrate in his positions right so the vibration means like vibrating amplitude will be there so the vibrating amplitude uh, like uh, what happened like atom is vibrating it will vibrate from the mean position so their vibration will be up and down the total it like we can tell it it will be nullifying so the amplitude of the vibration which is not the reason for the normal expansion so what will be the reason for the expansion so for that what we have done is we have taken two uh, salt samples that is KZA potassium chloride and is NaCl that is sodium chloride so if you see we are taking uh, two atoms separately like K plus LCL minus similarly Na plus and Cl minus okay so <coughs> now we will see how that NaCl or KCl whatever the atom we are taking is going to build it so for example sodium which is we are taking the sodium atom separately and the chlorine atom separately now um, we are t t like we are taking separately means we are not giving any chance to interact for the atom now we have to remove one electron from the sodium atom so what will happen na will changes to na plus plus e electron minus and there will be ionization energy that is plus 5.1 electron volt okay then that electron we are separately adding to the chlorine atom to will get chlorine minus ion so there will be electron affinity it chlorine will take the energy so it will be minus 3.7 electron volt so in total what is happening total energy is positive so if it is energy positive definitely the for getting a compound the energy should be the minimum so positive value means there is like not a uh, we cannot theoretically say that the NaCl can be formed so so nature what it prefer nature prefers the low energy so we will move towards the more and more the negative energy uh, to extend that it is possible okay so now so certain amount of energy that released that we refer to electron affinity and in case it is in order to of 3.7 electron volt per atom in each of these case uh, like we are one pair of atom there is 3.7 electron volt okay now in this case what the process is releasing energy because it preferred to be cl minus atom it is releasing that energy okay like 1.4 electron volt we have got it now if we bring those two ions like chlorine minus and sodium plus ion what will happen it will attract each other and form the compound right so there is uh, these two attract each other and closer to bring them to each other the energy of the system goes down okay 
so then what we have that plus 1 point electron volt create these two ions so there will be like three different kind of energies which we can we are dealing here so in total system what the energy will be minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 e square by r plus b by uh, divided by r power 10 plus that 1.4 electron volt that we can convert it to joule multiply with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 so first we those two ion if you bring together there will be attractive energy that we are representing by this first term minus 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 e square by r ok Now, if the ions are very close, then what will happen? The inner shell electron of the two atoms or the two ions now begin to overlap. So, the electron cloud of the two atoms, so to speak, or two ions, so, uh, so to speak, begin to overlap. When what, um, like, what happened then? The electrons in the inner shell are now forced to be to go to the higher energy level because to avoid the issue having that is the more electron in the same energy level and so on okay so then they have actually end up with having uh, to go to the higher energy level so if you have pushed the ions I, uh, indefinitely close a repulsive force of repulsion so set of in which the tries to put the uh, ions away and that the repulsion occurs because the inner shell of the electron which has now begun to overlap with each other or the electron cloud which begin overlap within the system to push them the atoms so that the energy which will be there that we can representing as e b power r b divided by r power n that n will be nearly 10 okay, that is the second energy 10 we are getting and the third contribution what that is the energy raised up when that nacl forming so there will be total energy in this form 1 minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 e square by r plus b divided by r power n plus 1.4 into 10 to uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so this is the total energy to the system so when the system is getting minimum energy attained then that crystal will be more stable so we are <coughs> just dealing that r is the distance between those two ions if you are telling and we can plot that like this diagram will explain the remaining part so for that what we have doing is like we are dealing first we are plotting those three relations separately so this will be the same like and the uh, plot will be like energy in the y-axis and the distance between the atoms in the x-axis so we are considering if it is r distance infinity what will happen the last time that 1.4 electron volt that is a constant value so it will be like the dotted line which we are parallel to the x-axis whatever the weight is not depend on the r so whatever the r value that will be same okay now let us see the other session that is the attractive uh, means the energy so that will be minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon to e square by r so that will be this decay because what is 1 over r time so it will be like decay time in this side now another one is b by r uh, r power 10 so that we can represent it here so in total if we plot these three energy together then it will be like the blue curve whatever we have seen here so more example whatever we have seen here okay now just imagine say particular the there will be minimum energy value that is e0 the minimum energy value the corresponding point in the r will be r0 we are calling 
now let us see that if the material at the energy e1 the temperature t1 so the com the energy will be e1 see in that energy what where there is two possibility in the material two possibility that atom can be vibrate one is in the in this position or this position so we cannot Mm, we can what we have to do we have to take the mean of that then we will get around here that we can take as the corresponding r1 so at the um, temperature t1 the distance between them is will be r1 similarly at the temperature t2 we are considering the I, uh, energy e2 then the atom can vibrate in between these two points similarly mean if you take it will be this because that that is not equal to r1 or that is r2 is not equal to r1 r1 is not equal to r0 all are different time uh, different because why it is because this curve is asymmetric because we know that the interaction between this energy that between these three like the formation of those two ions or those two atoms uh, combining to make a NaCl compound to that or not only just I'm telling NaCl one compound example if you take any other thing also same kind of the symmetry it won't be symmetry because of this repulsive term and as well as the formation energy and the attractive attractive term in the like because of the electron cloud hmm? So all these stream three them together comes means it won't get a asymmetric. This is the realistic case. So then what will happen that R zero, R one, R two energy won't be same. R two distance won't be same. Similarly, the energy also not same. So if we consider ideal situation, whatever the energy is changing, but the curve is symmetric, then what will happen? We will get all the mean path will at the R zero. So that's only at the ideal case. Okay. So that's what uh, the mean, <coughs> like no proper, just in a glance idea of the first week one classes. So wherever the temperature e t one e one and t two t one t two t three and the corresponding energy value e one e two e three, then the we will get a the uh, distance from the atoms will be from r zero to r three. Okay. No, so if then what we can understand from this? So R one, R zero, R three is the distance between. It. So more bonding strength, then the thermal expansion will be less. If the low bonding system, like bonding strength is low, then it will show the higher thermal expansion. So that is the main idea of the first week classes. So please just remember all those things first the properties mechanical optical electrical thermal properties and in thermal property we concentrated in the second week uh, second class of the first week like the lecture number 3 uh, in that we had explained about the thermal expansion so in thermal expansion first we uh, discussed about how the thermal expansion is happening and on is that thermal expansion only possible when we apply the uh, heat to the system to the metal or any kind of material is it possible only expansion is there any shrinking so we found that there is a shrinking also is possible and for some material a shrinking has some application that is sealing of the pipe and all to the electric wire and when we more consider about the expansion because expansion has more application in several places like railway or bridge wherever we have to study the expansion properly <coughs> so for that case why the expansion is happening and how it is happening we are told the energies are dealing with that that all we have studied and the curve whatever shown is which is also very important you should remember the curve and the energy formulas also and what will happen for a symmetric and asymmetric when symmetry will come in ideal case and asymmetric will be the real case of the that okay so just remember all those things and then we will go through the problem solving session
i hope all of you are understanding whatever i'm discussing can anyone tell are you able to see the full screen mode
so hope you can see the screen now let us go to the problem one by one so first we are and discussing the few problems which is the which we have already gone through that thermal expansion part okay So let us try first. The question is the main span of San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge is 1,275 meter long at its coldest, and the bridge is exposed to the temperature ranging from minus 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. What is the change in the length between these temperatures? So assume that bridge made end air of steel. So we know the formula already. Uh, so we have to think about only the expansion part. So delta L part, the second part that will be alpha L delta T. Alpha is the coefficient of expansion. So uh, we can tell that 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 for the steel. That uh, is uh, okay. I didn't given in the question, but that's the value for that. And the distance which is given, L value, the length of the bridge, and the temperature difference. Yes, now you can calculate it. So try yourself and uh, get check that are you getting the same answer or not. So the problem solving session is like I will give the problem you have to try yourself first and see the answer is getting or not and I will solve the solution also here okay so it is just, just let it be the interactive session so if you have any doubt you can ask to me so first few classes it will be really easy the first few weeks but uh, scoring in the exam I don't know how many of you are registered for exam so in the exam will ask some problem as well as this some theoretical aspect so you have to listen the video and I hope you can access the note also which is already in the website so please go through it and uh, try to solve the weekend every weekend assignments and so that also you have mark for it okay so here mostly few questions which will be like uh, uh, extra questions and few questions which I am doing that already solved in the earlier year assignments for the exams okay so that will be help you to score the good mark in that
yeah you will get the slides also as well as you will get the recorded video also it will be available in the your account nptel account so how many of you finished the problem please uh, keep it in the chat box then accordingly we can go to the another session it's another problem yes deepika you can ask if you in doubt is that your doubt the same we will get the uh, these slides Um, can you just let us know like how did we arrive at this equation so like how to derive or like if there is any some source which i can refer you actually you have seen actually that in the class right Same yeah so in the class Same. it is just directly taken that lt is equal to n not l not plus l not and uh, then we'll get the coefficient so i just want to know like Uh, what is the idea behind that? How we are taking that? Oh, how the equation derived? How the equation derived? Yes, ma'am. So actually, uh, that is like nothing. But normally, it is like expansion, right? So when like stress. So when stress occurs. How we are, uh, like how we are expanding uh, that? For example, we are telling that length l zero. Okay, let's write it here. L zero, which is the original length. Linear expansion that is nothing but change the length due to the length due to. So as per we have so as per we have this that is proportional to the temperature. The temperature. The proportionality constant is the coefficient here. Coefficient here. So first length we are so first length L zero. Then we can 
L E L E Now if we take the ratio if we, we take the ratio we will here. for example here So now let us go to the second problem. So the question is when the temperature of the metal uh, wire is increased from 0 degree Celsius to 10 degree Celsius, its length increased by 0 0.02 percentage. So the percentage change in the its mass density will be closed. So here actually you have to just think about the expansion part till here. Mm, this is the extra session that you will study later. Okay, how the ma like density like it's also you already know but still in the earlier classes like earlier years we have gone through it so first you find the coefficient of expansion alpha
So how many of you have finished this? So here what you have to do change in the length of the metal wire when the temperature changed by delta t okay so delta l is equal to i l alpha delta t so alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion so delta l it is given 0 0.02 percentage which compared to the l so it is like delta l by l what you will get 0 0.02 percentage of l means this one divided by l so you can cancel it it will come this much and you have to multiply by 10 that is the delta t value then you will get the answer 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 okay then if you get alpha there is one relation that volume coefficient expansion will be gamma is equal to 3 alpha then you will get answer this one then if you substitute in the density you will get the final answer so you should do till here correct
now move to the third problem 2 road a and b which is identical dimension at the temperature 30 degrees celsius if it if a is heated up to 180 degree and b is heated up to t degree celsius then the new length are the same if the ratio of the coefficient of linear expansion a and b is 4 is to 3 then the value of t you have to find it so options are given so it is like change in length it will be equal so then you can equate that i l alpha I uh, mean L alpha 1 delta theta 1 that is delta T1 is equal to L alpha 2 delta T2 then take the ratio you will get alpha 1 divided by alpha 2 is equal to then substitute the value you will get the final temperature. You see the another problem. So a brass strip is three centimeter long at zero degree Celsius. How long will it be at hundred degree Celsius if the coefficient of linear expansion of the brass is one point eighteen to ten to the power minus five de per degree Celsius? Okay, so the delta L formula we know already alpha L I delta T. So, so we have we have to find the delta L value that will be 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 per degree Celsius into 3 centimeter into and the delta T that will be 100 minus 0 so it will nothing but 100 so find the delta L value from there you have to substitute that to the main formula the final length will be delta L plus Li initial length so that will be the answer.
so you need conversion please check it okay
now let us go to the final problem metric rule is are collaborated at 20 degrees celsius what is the error in the measurement of 5500 millimeter if made at 45 degrees celsius the alpha value is given so delta l change in length you have to calculate alpha is given add like the total mm, length which is given 500 millimeter Remember, change in temperature you can calculate from this so just find out the value of delta l how much it's changed
so these are the few mathematical problems which we have discussed okay now we will go to few theory sections Th like theory problems only but theory related We will solve the theory problems. So first one, it is important to understand the exact thermal profile of a flame in order to use it for cooking. Is it important? Can anyone tell the answer? Please respond. It's like true or false kind of questions only. Most of them are you can answer very well. What is the answer for that? It is important to understand the exact thermal profile of a flame in order to use for use it for cooking. It's not right. We don't need to understand it. So the answer will be false. Another one. A model is useful only if it is can predict the data over the full range of experimental condition. Is that for true or false? It's false. Okay. Now another one. The empirical model are useful even if the underlying science is not understood. That is true statement. And another one. There are no instances where the theoretical prediction has been made ever even before the experiment has been conducted. So what is the answer for that? There are no instances where the theoretical predictions has been made even before experimental has been conducted. That is false. So now the fifth stage. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, the first question, uh, it is the true option, ma'am. No, right. First question was it is important to uh, First question was to understand the uh, uh, exact thermal profile of flame, ma'am. 
it is true ma'am because uh, during... understand except thermal profile no ma'am it's very important uh, to know no ma'am has a uh, different part has different parts of the flame having the different uh, temperatures ma'am so uh, typically the inner part uh, uh, the flame so are needed to be cooking, just imagine a normal household lady like uh, for example my mother or whoever it is so for cooking do we need to really know about the flame the thermal profile of the flame it's only aviation no no cooking. ma'am it's not about any experiment or it's not asking about anything else it's just for cooking they were asking um i can't get it ma'am has a uh, uh, we need to know about the uh, thermal expansion in uh, cooking ma'am how uh, ma'am because uh, uh the different parts of the flame are varying in temperatures ma'am and uh, it helps in a cooling uh, controlling heat distribution also ma'am ma'am ha oh, yeah i understood and it also prevents uh, burning and under undercooking food ma'am for the best cook uh, for the best uh, dish in the sense that we need to know about the uh, cooking i mean uh, the flame no ma'am the exact thermal profile of a flame we need to know no ma'am okay in that sense the answer will be true yeah ma'am mm, okay Okay now let us go to the fifth problem for all material as temperature increases electrical resistance increases is that true or false that will be false okay next one the mechanical properties of material remains the same regardless of the condition under which it is tested ma'am it is false ma'am sixth question yeah that answer is false now metals typically expands on heating is that true or false metal typically it will expand yeah that will be true now some excellent conductors of heat may not be excellent conductors of electricity what it will be Mom, true, mom. Yeah, that's true. And see the another question: the thermal expansion of different material become equal to once they have in contact with each other. The thermal expansion of different material become equals once they have they are in contact with each other. What will be the possible answer? false ma'am ha huh, that will be false yes now see the 10th one ish a shallow and wide e versus r curve that will be capital r also the distance between the two atoms okay implies the large coefficient of thermal expansion false ma'am how i uh, because uh, 
because of the uh, because of the Young's modulus, uh, in that way we say that uh, the coefficient of uh, thermal expansion, uh, which is uh, much uh, material expands at the temperature, ma'am. So we can say that uh, the expression uh, of uh, E versus R curve is false. No, then it will be larger coefficient of thermal expansion, right? When you see that curve, you remember? So, if it's the wider range yeah. means the R0, whatever the value, come it from R0 to that another, whatever the temperature if you are taking T3 or whatever it is, the R3 will be higher. Right. Then it will uh, be if you see independent in the sense temperate thermal expansion. Okay, mom. Actually, okay, mom. That's it. In where case said about ideal case and the real case. Okay, so it will be the true. So this uh, answer the statement true or false. This hope you all can answer now. see this the two ends of A and B of a long metal bar are kept at two different temperatures 60 and 100 degrees Celsius respectively a four probe measurement shows that you have to match the answers here As option B is correct, ma'am. Hmm. 
so what will be the four probe techniques like the metal plate will be there there will be four probes to in the two probe we are applying the current and checking the resistance value here so that's the four probe techniques normally we are using so what we are doing here so it is a metal so there will be ions and the electrons so more the conductivity which is causing due to the from the electrons so first one side will be 60 other side is 100 degrees celsius So in these two different point what will be the electrical conductivity of the metal. So here what will happen the ionic conductivity because ions won't contribute much so the ionic conductivity will be same okay the electrical conductivity will be different so those two are the answer for this question. Ma'am, like how ionic conductivity is same, so it does get affected by temperature, right? No, it won't get affected much because, see, it's a metal, right? Metal ions will be like, what are the more charge carrier here? Electrons. So when the temperature changes, the electrons flow from more, it will be from one end to another end. The ions won't be much. So that's why ionic conductivity will be remain as same. And the electrical conductivity will be different. Thank you. So now let us go to the another problem. Three states of material that are solid, liquid, gas among the various properties of material. So the options are solid can have mechanical property, gas, gas can have mechanical property, liquid can have electronic, electrical property and gas can have thermal property. So what are the answers here? It's easy problem. You can just tell. Please answer it. What will be the possible answers? There will be multiple answers. Okay.
Then, that is correct. There are more answers. Liquid air can have electrical properties. Mm, yes. Solid can have uh, mechanical properties. Gases can have uh, uh, mechanical properties also. And liquids how, how? can have the Gas electrical can have properties. Mechanical property. How? As a gas cannot have the traditional mechanical properties like a solid smell. Uh, whereas the interior is described as a property such as a pressure, volume and temperature man. No, normally what we mean by mechanical properties, there should be stress strain, right? Hmm? Can, yes, ma'am. Can you plot a stress strain curve for gas? Ma'am, last one is gas can have uh, thermal uh, properties. Gas can have thermal properties. It is not possible because we, the mechanical properties which we are telling is like normally stress strains and all. So that is not possible for gas. So those other three are will be the answer for this. Okay. So now let's go to the another problem. Third one, see the resistance of a metal filament used in the bulb goes up with the temperature. So we know, hopefully, I hope everyone of you knows that the resistivity formula, what it is that rho zero plus alpha t minus t zero. So this is the coefficient of resistance and the resistivity value coefficient of resistivity. So what will happen if the temperature increases the resistivity value also will increase. Okay. So this will be true statement. So a bimetallic strip of an electrical ion work as a what? Can anyone guess it? Answer. Ma'am, temperature regulator. Ha. Huh. There will be possible answers a temperature regulator as well as the temperature indicator. Okay. Both systems are relevant. Why not switch? In it's ha, kind of anything and also. Yeah, that's true. Then only it can re, uh, check the temperature how much in the iron box. But it can't be as a heating element. That will be separate coil will be there.
let us see the next question fifth one yes. which material property is responsible for the formation of ferric oxide in an iron pillar ferric oxide nothing but corrosion okay that right. So it is nothing but chemical property. See sixth question: the thermal expansion coefficient of ionic material is impacted by the electrical conductivity. Uh, it's false, ma'am, because of the activities. Ma'am. Ma'am, why can't? We say electrical property. I don't understand. What do you mean by electrical property in that sense? And because we are we are having a closed circuit for corrosion to happen. Electrical circuit is happening. So why can't we say that? Too? No, no. It's asking about ion pillar. Ion pillar. Where is the electrical circuit will be? No. In corrosion. There will be uh, ions. Uh, there is no. For corrosion, I find. Electrical circuit, electrical chemical circuit will be happening. There will be uh, amount of ions and the energy will be happening. Wait, wait. How the electrical circuit will come in ion pillar? Ion pillar is like if you see in road side some like tube light or these things. There will be electrical circuit, right? To say that. so normally in ion pillar what is happening? Then it's uh, contact with the air or contact with the water. So what will happen? This ion changes to the Fe three plus, and the oxygen will be already in the air or whatever water. Then that also will be O two two minus. Then it will make Fe two O three. That's it. So that normally in ion pillar, actually for corrosion there are so many properties. Electrical also we can tell, chemical also we can tell. But if they are specifically asked about in an ion pillar what is happening, so that will be only chemical property. Okay. So um, so in a general sense. So what is the answer for the seven question? Can anyone guess the answer? 
Is it diamond? Yeah, answer is diamond. Why? Why are you saying? Yeah, because uh, it has a poor electrical conductivity. How? Thermal How it is people. possible? It is poor electrical conductivity. Why? No, it's SP3 hybridized, so there is no electrons. Yeah. So normally we know that iron and aluminium, it's well-known material. So it's both have thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. Then only we have to think about graphite and diamond. So in graphite, what is happening? Graphite is like carbon atoms are bonded like this. So it is SP2 hybridization. So then SP like S1 orbital, P will be 3 orbital. Okay. Px, Py, Pz. So sp2 hybridization only these two, three orbital will play role, and here electrons are free, so electrons can move here in this. So electron is moving definitely, it will be a good conductor. So graphite is good conductor then. Then in the case of diamond, it is sp3. So all the states are hybridized, whatever the forming. So all the electrons are hybridized here, so that then electron can't move much out of it. So then diamond will be the poor electrical conductor so the answer will be diamond then what about the eighth question ne material which have the negative thermal expansion coefficient will be a heat shrink material This one also. So these four and three answers are possible. Now what about this energy versus distance curve used for describing thermal expansion in a material the combination of it's already it's direct question from the class. So what are the energies? Option B, and it's an energy electron affinity and group energy affinity. Yeah, it will be option B, ionization energy, electrical affinity, Coulomb energy, and the electron curve. It's a direct question, okay. And what about the last question? If the energy versus distance curve of a symmetric nature, then mean atomic position will be. It's very easy. Please, anyone answer this. If the energy is unchanged, ha, it will be remains unchanged because we told already symmetric material. It will be like the mean position will be always R zero. Okay. So these are the <laughs> questions. So hope all of you understood. So I will uh, share the um, PPT as well as the video. Okay. So see you in the next class. Uh, it will be the next Sunday. Okay. So bye everyone. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, where will it be shared? Uh, I think in, in your NPTEL portal you can see the titles. They will share with you. In the portal, not in through email, but it will be shared in if it is not, then you please let me know. Next class, I will share the video link. Okay. Sure. Bye then. Uh,
Could you please tell the uh, question pattern? I didn't aware of that. What is the question pattern? It will be like multiple choice questions. It will be there like theory question as well as problem. Like how you are solving assignment. Same way. It will be. Yeah, thank you.